Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash, live via Skype in England. Jacob, one of the believers had an interesting question. What is the nature of the apostasy, i.e. the falling away? Is it a complete falling away from faith? Is it losing one's salvation? Or is it something else? Could it be losing salvation for some, but departing from the teaching of the truth in others so that uh, those others might be deceived? This is a very confused question by someone who appears to be addressing the issue of eternal security. Is it true or false, or to what degree is it true, under the guise of the apostasy? They seem to be using one issue to address another. To begin with, they're entirely mistaken in their definitions. We have three separate words that have to be understood. The term for falling away from the faith, once somebody has believed and then they stop believing it, they fall away from it, is, for instance, in Hebrews 6.6. 6. It essentially is a case very ending, parapacentes, of the Greek word parapito, two words, para next to and pito falling away from. It is when you fall away from something that you had once been close to. That is a term for personal backsliding in Hebrews 6.6. 6. Parapito or parapacentes. That is the first. The second is where Jesus talked about many will fall away and betray one another in the Olivet Discourse. For instance, in Matthew 24.10, there the word is scandalous thesontes, uh, or scandalous thesontai, scandalize or ensnare, they become entrapped. Backsliders become entrapped by the world, by putting their faith in this world in some way, and in the last days that so intensifies, it is what motivates them, or what essentially presses them or turns them against other believers. Their hope is in this world and they're out to save their own skin and they become ensnared, they become entrapped in a scandalon. That is the second term. So there's a confusion of terms with apostasia. Apostasia comes from the underlying Greek word aphistomai a fistomai, to stand out of, to stand out of. Traditional pre-tribulationism rejects this newfangled interpretation of a fistomai and the word that derives from it, apostasia, invented by Thomas Ice and seemingly the late Tim LaHaye. Dr. Mark Hitchcock of the Preacher Research Center, among others, do not accept it. Traditional pre-tribulationism does not accept it. It's a newfangled nonsense. Now, I'm speaking here of qualified theologians who know Greek very well. I'm talking about people with real doctorates, not people with a make-believe doctorate from a non-accredited institution like Thomas Ice. This person who sent this obviously doesn't seem to know any Greek. They think because the term fall away or falling away is in one text, it's the same Greek word in every other text using it when there are three separate Greek terms. So the person is way out of their league. They really, without trying to be offensive, don't know what they're talking about. They're speaking nonsense. This idea that the rapture is the apostasy is again a new invention. It is not held by traditional pre-tribulationists Serious scholars would not lend credence to it to any wide degree. It's a nonsense. It came about in an act of desperation by people like Thomas Ice when people began leaving the traditional pre-tribulational position. I'm convinced the Holy Spirit is showing more and more people that pre-tribulationism is not scriptural. And as this house of cards falls to pieces, they were desperate to come up with a place where the rapture is taught. 
the mentor of modern pre-tribulationism academically, the scholarly influence on nearly all of them, was the late Dr. John Wolverd, president of Dallas Seminary. In his book on the rapture, he admits there is no passage, no passage at all, that plainly states pre-tribulationism. It's an opinion. It's something gleaned. So, for want of having any passage that teaches it, they have to begin engaging in asegesis, reading things into other texts it does not say. They generally do this in two ways. Their first way is to confuse the two different Greek terms, wrath and tribulation, the ellipsis and orge. Taking the message to the Church of Philadelphia, I will keep you from the peresmos, the hour of testing, and say that that is the same as the tribulation. When in fact, Jesus says they were already in tribulation, the ellipsis, very bad exegesis, and it is horrific asegesis. Uh, asegesis is always horrific. Uh, again, a nonsense argument. Their other argument is what this person seems to be subscribing to, the Thomas Ice argument, where the apostasy is the rapture, which again, mainstream pre-tribulationism and pre-tribulational scholars with real doctorates don't believe it. Mark Hitchcock says the word would have been a separate word. It would have used the word arpezo or something other than the word apostasia. Not only that, but the context of Second Thessalonians does not allow for it. The context does not allow for it. The context is talking about a departure from the truth and the departure from the truth that God handles or hands them over to. As we read further in verse 10, because they do not love a knowledge of the truth, therefore the Lord will send a deluding influence to make them believe what is false. This matches Zechariah chapter 11 very closely. The Antichrist will not simply be a working of Satan, the ultimate mystery of iniquity or mystery of lawlessness. It'll be an ultimate working of Satan that God allows in judgment against those who have departed from the truth or against those who do not love the truth and seek to be saved. Now, saved in that context is not talking about necessarily or primarily saved as in justified, born again. It's talking about those who persevere to the end shall be saved. It's talking about a falling away. But notice in the context of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it is largely corporate. Therefore, the Lord will send upon them a deluding influence. It is a corporate apostasy. As I've pointed out many times, here in Great Britain, the five major Protestant denominations, the Methodists, the Church of England, Church of Scotland, Presbyterians, United Reformed Church, are all ordaining homosexuals and lesbians. And you have evangelicals in America and in Britain and elsewhere caving in on same-sex marriage and homosexuality one after another. Hillsong refuses to say it's wrong. Uh, you've got Hillsong calling Allah the same God as Christians and Jews. You've got these horrible things happening. There's a general apostasy in the church, evident in the ecumenical movement, evident in the issue of same-sex marriage, evident in a number of spheres. So there's an apostasy. That's what it is talking about. Now, the church is made up of individuals. What you have is people leaving the true church, the ecclesia, and going into the harlot church. You have whole congregations becoming part of the harlot church system by remaining in backslidden denominations and so forth. That is one issue. Hebrew 6, Parapito, is another issue. There is no way anybody can read Hebrews 6 or Hebrews 10 without doing somersaults and monkey tricks to say that once saved, always saved is unconditional. We are eternally secure in Christ. A backslider is no longer in Christ. To have eternal security, 
They must repent and get back in the lifeboat. They must put on the life vest once again, the garments of salvation. That's the only way. An unrepentant backslider does not have the assurance of salvation. Now the word patapito does not mean they were never saved to begin with. It means they once were. Read Hebrews 6 carefully. Read Hebrews 10 carefully. You have to do monkey tricks. Likewise, they must do monkey tricks with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Its plain meaning is the episunagage, our gathering around Jesus. Epi, around. Sunagage, we get the word synagogue, our gathering around him. That is the rapture and resurrection. <laughs> Concurrently, the parousia, the return of Jesus, will not happen until the faithful church know who the Antichrist is. Again, people do somersaults to get out of the plain meaning. They engage in Darbyism, in his Neo-Marcionite style hermeneutics. Anything and everything, but deal with the plain meaning of the text. Pre-tribulationism, although many fine people believe it, is a nonsense. Unconditional, once saved, always saved is a nonsense. Hebrews 6 proves it. Hebrews 10 proves it. 1 Corinthians 5 proves it. The person asking this question are confusing the Greek terms. They're obviously not even familiar with them. And they're trying to use one issue to reinforce their beliefs about what Calvinists call perseverance of the saints, but it's not what the Bible means by perseverance of the saints. That is unconditional, once saved, always saved. No, this is wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, finally, in re reply to the question, I would point out that the term apostasia is almost a hapex legemina, within a hair breadth of being a hapex legemina. That is a term only used once in Scripture. However, an etymologically related form of it is also found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, which also speaks of the last days, which is also in an eschatological prophetic context. It says the following in English. It is a trustworthy statement, uh, but the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will apostatize. Again, it's collective. It's not just one person, it's many people are going to apostatize from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. What we might say is parapito is a personal moral falling away. Apostasia, apostasy, is a doctrinal falling away from doctrinal truths you once believed. We must interpret 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 1 Timothy 4.1 in light of each other. That's what we see. We are told directly, interpreting Scripture in light of Scripture in 1 Timothy 4.1, the Spirit explicitly says, in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. <coughs> <coughs> Paying attention the deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. They are going to be spiritually seduced, demonically spiritually seduced, into falling away from the scriptural doctrine they once believed, abandoning it in favor of false doctrine. That is what Second Thessalonians means, because that is what 1 Timothy 4.1, also speaking of the apostasy in the last days, plainly and without any ambiguation, states it means. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our 
Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube, deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print for the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.